starting to get into the, I mean, it's a small town, so we really hadn't seen a lot of the, the gang-related uh, graffiti, but now we're starting to. Uh, MS-13, Latin Kings, and, you know, the Bloods, the Crips, and everything else like that, they're all over the place. Um, and what I'm here for is just to give you an introduction. Uh, I'm not going to take very, very much, much of your time today talking about it, because we can go on forever about it. Um, but one thing I do want to, you know, talk to you about is the safety of it. Um, do, does anybody in here deal with graffiti on glass or anything like that? You do? Um, now, the reason I want to talk, about, talk to you about safety is, is the gangs want their, you know, they want their emblem out there. They want their tag out there. It's out there for a reason. Um, so don't just go up to it and say, you know, okay, yeah, a gang, you know, marked this window. You know, and then just start taking it off. Because, one, you need to report it to the police. And the reason for that is because they have gang, uh, gang units. They need to track where the gangs are, what they're putting up, and everything else. So you need to report it to the police to take pictures of it and give the pictures to the police also. If the police don't come out and take pictures of it. Um, tell, your, you know, tell all your customers. You know, if they get tagged, they need to call you immediately. Because the longer it stays up there, the more they're going to get tagged. The sooner they can get, the quicker they can get it off. Repeatedly taking it off quickly, gangs will start leaving them alone because they want their tags to stay up. So as soon as they, you know, just tell your customers. As soon as you get tagged, give me a call, and you know, we'll come out there, take pictures of it, call the police, let them know about it. Um, now, does anybody know how to? Uh, Identify a tag from a gang or just some punk out there uh, playing with some uh, with some spray paint. I'm pretty sure that the lady I'm talking about it was neighborhood kids because she said there was all kinds of graffiti stuff and then one of them had written "I'm sorry" on there. So that's probably not that's, <laughs> that's probably not a gang. Yeah, that's just some little some little adolescent uh, kid out there playing with spray paint. Uh, your gang tags. They, uh, they're going to be sharp, crisp, one color, to the point, this is what it is. Uh, and your artists, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's usually going to be cheap paint. They're going to get what they can get. Your artists, on the other hand, are your uh, balloon fat letters, multi colors, real pretty. You know, some of them are real, you know, some of them are real pretty. All right, that's, that's more or less your graffiti artist. That's not, um, you know, that's not gang related and everything, but still people don't want that on their, on their uh, property. So, but if you come across any of the gangs, just one color, um, some of them's going to have uh, five points, some of them's going to have six points, and what that, what that represents is different, different gangs mean, you know, different points mean different parts of the gangs. You've got people, you've got folks. So that's going to tell you which, which side of the gangs that they're on. You know, so, but I mean, we can get into that later on down the line, um, maybe off to the side or something like that. But that, that'll tell you who you're messing with and, um, and everything. But what, I, you know, what I'm here to tell you is, you know, the safety of it, because those gang members, if they see you doing this, removing their tag, they're not going to like it. And they'll shoot first and ask questions second. So, if... If you know, if you are removing some gang graffiti in a gang, you know, ridden area, mm -hmm. call the cops. Let them know, you know, hey, I'm out here removing this gang. Can you, you know, up the presence, or you know, can you send someone over? You know, chances are they're gonna send someone over. No, but just you know, if you're working alone, I don't recommend it on graffiti. Mm -hmm. Always have someone there to watch your back. Because if there's a car, you see a car come down the road once, eh, you see him coming again, looking at you, yeah. Now it's time to call 911 and say, hey, I got, you know, I got someone uh, over here. I'm removing this uh, gang graffiti, and uh, they keep riding by. You know, can you, can you send someone over here? And they'll send someone over there. So, you know, always watch your back. You know, there's no reason to die over a, you know, a little bit of spray paint that, you know, some pump put on the wall. So, you know, I can't stress it enough. Be safe with, you know, removing the graffiti. Because it's, it's no joke, especially in the big cities. Um, now I brought uh, I brought a product here. Um, I like uh, BK Enterprises as far as graffiti removal. Uh, this is called Metal Safe. This is this is safe for your anodized aluminum, and you know for your window 
frames. So if, you know, if they do spray across the window onto the aluminum, just spray this on there, let it sit for a few minutes, and you can wipe it off. Really good stuff. Uh, anybody do any uh, Burger Kings or you know any fast food that's, that paint their windows with uh, advertisements? Spray it on there. Let it sit. You might have to you know agitate it a little bit with a you know a rough rag or something like that. Then spray it again. It takes it right off. That'll keep the help. You know might help you keep the blades off the uh, tempered glass uh, from from scratching. <coughs> Um, Dad wanted me to come up and talk uh, because a lot of times in big cities and stuff like that, when taggers come out there, you know, tag the area, they're right there. I mean, you got mostly storefront windows. They're going to tag around it. It'd be a great up upsell for y'all to go ahead and take care of that too. Uh, BK Enterprises has different products uh, for brick. Uh, so, uh, they got one called Sign Safe. So. They uh, spray it on a reflective sign, like the string signs. They all have a special reflective coating over top of them. Uh, if you put any uh, graffiti remover on there, like Tag Away, Taginator, or something like that, you just bought yourself a string sign because that'll, that'll take that reflective coating off. And so they have they have a sign safe product that will, that you can use on the signs. It won't, it won't damage the reflective uh, coating on them. Uh, but that and I thought this would be a great upsell for y'all. Y'all already got the window jobs, and if they get tagged on the bricks or something like that, y'all be able to take care of that also. And uh, I just want to, you know, tell you that BK Enterprises has some wonderful products when it comes to that. They have, uh, they have some um, pin. Uh, they go in there with the sharpies and stuff like that. Well, they have some wipes that you can just wipe off, you know, wipe it off with that. Uh, and they have some from just regular brick and block, and they have a general that's. Uh, a little bit safer than the Elite. It's called Elite for brick and block. Then they have a general that's a little bit safer than uh, the Elite. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. What else is the critical besides the glass and metal? You're talking about gang graffiti as far as uh, upsell, and I'm thinking about upsell and anything. Is it working with Porta Johns? They always got the right yeah. over there. What else? What other products? I mean, use, um, use it for? Just go to uh, just go to BK Enterprises. My yeah, mybke.com. Okay. Um, and I have some. I have some literature I was going to bring. Well, we forgot it. Go back and get it. Go get it. Okay, <laughs> let me fly back. I'll be back in a couple hours. Porous or non-porous? Is that an issue? This is more for your smooth surfaces. Metal safe is more for your smooth surfaces. They have a general. They have an elite for your porous. It's not wood. It won't work. Do what? Uh, elite, and, and uh, they have a, they have one that's like a general purpose. General purpose may work better for you on your porta johns. Uh, the metal safe, it's it's real, it's it's kind of really mild, so it won't damage the aluminum uh, and that's aluminum coating on it. I mean, it works well, but you know they just made it really safe for the and aluminum. Well, you need to report it. You know, you, you need to report all, all graffiti. That way, the gang, you know, the gang task force will come out, and take a look at it, take pictures, because they want to track where the gangs are in the cities, where they're operating, what they're. Because tags, tags have meanings. Um, each tag, it, it means something. I mean, it, it can all, it can go all the way up to you know, placing a hit on somebody. So that's why it's really dangerous to to remove a gang member's tag, because I mean, that could be. You know, another gang member did something to this gang. Well, someone posted that up there with a tag saying, okay, this guy, I mean, he's going to have, you know, initials for it or whatever, and what gang he's in, and um, put a hit out on him, do a tag. Um, and that's generally that follows to make sure it's clean. So, yeah, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times the insurance companies are going to pay for uh, gang. That. Can you give any general guidelines as far as pricing? I have no, I have no concept of. Well, um, what you can do as far as you know, as far as pricing is, you know, how much do you want to make an hour, and say, okay, this is going to take me, uh, you know, 
this is going to take me, let's say, an hour or 30 minutes. I mean, you're going to have to have a minimum. I'm not pulling out of my driveway for less than $175. So if it takes me 10 minutes, well, it took me 10 minutes. Um, I had a hospital call me up. They had, uh, some, it was right around Christmas time, right after. It was three days after Christmas. Three days after Christmas. Cold. And, I mean, it was cold. So I had the fresh washer. You know, I took the hot, hot water machine over there. And the thing about BK Enterprises, you don't need hot water. It works, it works better with cold water. Uh, but they called me up three days after Christmas, and <coughs> someone, I mean, it was a huge, just silver tack. It was just some punks. It wasn't no gang-related incident. I took pictures, called the police, let them know about it. Um, but, you know, I, I figured it was going to take me a couple hours to do it because it was, you know, took up quite a bit of space. Went up there with, with the Elite, put it in a paint tray, took me a paintbrush, and went down the wall with the garden hose, and uh, rubbed it on there. I'm like, oh, this is going, this is going to go, go well. Put the second coat on there. I was out of there in 15 minutes cleaning with a garden hose and never cranked up that machine. And it worked so well, it didn't even disturb the dirt underneath the paint, so there was no shadow. And so are you painting where they spray? Right. Just going right over where they spray. Exactly. It doesn't brighten or anything like that. It didn't even disturb the dirt. And you were, when you were telling me, you went to tell the customer, you said something about only brushing in one direction. Go yeah. Uh, tell me that part again. Okay. <laughs> Um, any strippers that you use, uh, whether it be the, uh, the BK Enterprises, I mean, you can spray it on there. I like to, I like to uh, brush it on because you get a little bit of agitation with it. Um, anytime you use a stripper, you only want to brush one way with it, okay? Because when you, when you brush it on, you're laying it down and it's activated, okay? And when you brush back across it the other way, now you just flipped it over and because strippers have... Uh, like spike chemicals in it, where it's going to dive down into it, all right, like teeth. Well, if you brush back the other way, you just flipped it over, and now it's not working. So you only want to brush. I mean, whether you go with a strip of cream, uh, Eco Chem, Dietrich, uh, Prosoco, all of them have strip of creams, uh, and you may want to look at some of those if you have some really heavy um, graffiti, getting some of those and brushing those on. And that'll take off any paint that you can think of. Uh, yeah. How do you market? Do you do you partner with like some of the uh, gang task force in your local city? So you can go. You can go to the police department, sheriff's departments, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, if you're in, you know, a high area where it gets tagged, like around here, you know, you can go to shop to shop if you want to. You can fix you up a, a, a flyer about it, and you know, go to shop to shop with it. And you know, sooner or later, your name's going to get out there. And um, about removing it, and you know you're gonna start getting calls. Uh, I think one of the biggest mistakes where people where people are with with graffiti removal is they think, ah, the more pressure I got, the better it is. No, nope, because the less pressure you have, I have, the better you are. Because if you go in there with uh, 3,500, 5,000 psi, and you hit it with a turbo tip or a 25 or a 15, <coughs> or if you want to be really stupid, you hit it with a zero. Now you just made that gang member's tag permanent because you just you just defaced the brick or you know damaged whatever uh, subsurface that, that was on there, and you just etched it into there and you can't do nothing about it. So less pressure, better off. So uh, have you ever had any problems with the gangs? On that on that job right after Christmas, uh, I had I had a little old man, a little old black man walk up. And, you know, I saw him out of the corner of my eye, so, you know, I kind of stopped. Had a fresh washer running, had a zero degree tip in there, and uh, 200 degree water. Yeah, it was running. Zero degree tip right there. Yeah, walk up on me. I might not have a bullet, but I got a hot steam uh, zero degree that's going to hit you in the face with. So, you know, he walked up. I picked it up, and we started talking. And, you know, so I kept working. He was just, he was just uh, you know, an, an, someone out of the neighborhood. Well, next thing you know, here come these three uh, three young kids coming up there. You ought to seen that old man. That old man went off. You think you think he was Rambo or something? <laughs> He's like, you know, he went after those kids. Get the hell, you know. He used some other, you know, colorful language uh, and chased them out of there. So, you know, would I've had trouble if he wasn't there? Maybe, but you know, I would have got a couple of them. <laughs> Some of them would have, you know, a hot 
hot uh, facial. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna say you're not gonna have trouble because you know you do it long enough. Yeah, you're you're gonna have some you know complications. Um, yes, Ron. Yeah, I've had three in uh, 25 years. Gang-related graffiti removal complications. Yeah, I mean you're gonna have. Um, there was a guy down in uh, Texas when we were down in Texas. Uh, he was a police. He's a police. Well, this is what he does also. He he, does, he goes out and does pressure washing, does a lot of uh, graffiti removal. Uh, and he was out there, he was removing some graffiti and everything, and this uh, gang guy came up to him and asked him, you know, what in, uh, what in the hell are you doing? He goes, I'm removing this tag. He goes, I put it there for a reason. He goes, oh, so you put this here? He goes, yeah, and as soon as you take it down, I'll put it back up. He goes, really? You are? Well, thank you. Put your hands against the wall, you're going to jail. <laughs> and arrest them. So, I mean, you know, if, if you're going to get into graffiti removal, you know, the only thing I say is be safe. Look after, you know, look after yourself. Did you tell them the hours that are safe? Just out of curiosity? No, I haven't, I haven't said that. Um, typically, during, if, if you're going to, the safest time to do it is really right around midday. All right? Um, nighttime. Nighttime, that's not the safest time to do it. Some people do go out there at night. Um, I know some guys up, up north, up in Maryland. He's got a black truck, and he's got strobes put in his uh, in his uh, headlights and taillights, and he's got a blue light out, out the front window. He goes out there, he turns the strobes on, turns the blue, uh, blue lights flashing, and he watches it. No one messes with him, because they think it's the police out there doing it. Um, police come by, you know, they see him, they, they all know him. And they know that he put the blue light in there for protection. They don't. They don't say nothing going. Um, do I recommend you going out there and putting the blue light in your car, you know, in your truck to do it? Uh, no. You might want to go talk to the police first. And uh, right. Typically, I like to go, you know, if I go out to do a graffiti job, I like to go out there about midday uh, or first thing in the morning. Well, no, I won't. I'll just walk around. Yes, you're the next speaker. That's correct. Um, <laughs> Because typically at night, night times, you're more active gang time anyways. So if you go out there at night and doing it, chances are you are going to have more complications than if you go out there during the day and doing it. Is that nice? Yes. There is one? No. <laughs> Any other questions? I see you thinking. Oh, one, one thing too. <clears throat> Probably as soon as he sits down, somebody's going to think, oh man, should I should have asked this. Or not as soon as Roger sits down, then this afternoon or tomorrow or whenever. Um, we are, keep track of those questions because you will have another chance to ask them. We'll do a, uh, we're going to have a panel at the end, for an open discussion. So every, any questions or comments that you think of after someone has spoken, Keep up with it. Try to remember because we're going to revisit all these topics briefly. And I have a, well, everybody has a folder, but up here on mine, if you can come by sometime today, give me your name, phone number, and your uh, email, uh, mailing address. Uh, write that down on the folder, and I'll send you out some BK, uh, BK inter, uh, BKE uh, coupons and, you know, what their products do. Are y'all owners of BK? No. They just like us. Oh, they, like yeah, they, just, they just like us. Do you uh, partner with the local police in your community, or? We're trying to. We're, we're, we're it's like, sometimes it's like beating your head against the wall because we're, we have a small area, and, you know, gangs are there, but they're just, you know, not like they are up in, up in Greensboro and Raleigh. One thing I was thinking is, uh, you know, if you go to the police department, let them know what you're doing, helping them out, and uh, maybe you could ask them what. If I get a couple of uh, shirts and say, whatever PD on them, I would, if I did that, I'd go to an unmarked truck with exactly. a police shirt on. I wouldn't take my company truck with a gang to greet it. See what exactly. Exactly. That's another part and of the state. As far as the blue light thing, that's exactly what I was thinking about. I would portray myself in what I was doing. Like yeah, but then, but, but then you're walking a fine line of impersonating a uh, police officer. It's all good. That's what I'm saying. If you partner with them, perhaps you could go over there and get permission for them at least to wear a shirt. Yeah. Or something like that. Ron? There's uh, areas in Phoenix that the police will not allow us. We have to get a civilian assist to remove the graffiti. They, they, and they're, they're more than happy to come out 
and stand there and watch you remove the gang graffiti. Yep. You don't even need to call it security or anything. Just you have to be able to, which is which is also okay if the customer understands that. Then they know that you're going to be waiting for that assist, which means you're charging them more money because the cops aren't going to come out right when you call. Them. No, they're going to tell you it's going to be an hour and a half, or if, and then if it's this area that's a bad crime area, you could be standing there for four hours waiting for them. Now, the, but there are certain times of the day in these areas. I mean, I'm not refuting what you said, Raj, but. From 5 to 10 a.m., crackheads go to bed and stop selling dope at 5. They do, their, their second string guys or their second shift guys wake up about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. But yeah, so, I mean, it's going to be different everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the neighborhoods are going to be different. Exactly. Right? So, I mean, but just use your, you know, just use common sense for terms of what time you're going to do this. Uh, because most of the time, if it gets done around, uh, around us, they do it at night. They're not going to do it in broad daylight. Um, but, you know, back to the safety, always have someone watching your back. And always let the police know that, hey, you know, I got this gang graffiti here. I know it, you know, I'm down removing. I'm in this area. And, you know, if, if you see a car, you know, a car going by multiple times watching you, you know, looking at you, call the cops. Let them, you know, let them know, hey, I got this car that's driving by numerous times looking at me. And you know, chances are they'll send a patrolman over, you know, just to check it out, see what's going on. So, I mean, you're there to make the city, you know, a city look better. So, cops gonna, you know, cops gonna help you out. I'm not gonna say they're gonna, you know, come every every single time you call about graffiti, but you know, take pictures, let them know, <coughs> and you know, turn the pictures into the gang, you know, gang task force. That way they can keep track of where the gangs are, where they're operating out of. I mean, because you might turn in the, the one the one tag that's going to, you know, might save someone's life. It might be a hit. And you don't know. And, uh, or, you know, you might turn in a tag that, that's going to uh, call for a gang war. And, you know, you didn't know it. But they, you know, but they will. So, turn them in. Any other questions? Nope. Well, I'll be here all weekend. So, if you have any questions about, um, about graffiti, pressure washing, wood care, anything like that, just let me know. Um, and I'm sure I'll be asking y'all about windows. Where's Grand North Carolina? What's the closest thing? There's a hole in, in I-85, and as soon as you dip into it, you're there. As soon as you get out of it, you're out of it. <laughs> like no, it's, it's, it's right in between Durham. It's right in between Durham and Greensboro. Uh, they want, they sold, there was a warehouse, and they sold the warehouse, and they said, well, we need to get this graffiti on. So I went out there and I looked at it, and it had a bunch of Pokemon crap on there, um, and some other little, you know, nonchalant, you know, paint. And I, you know, I gave him a price, and he goes, "Oh well, I just want that one word taken off." So I'm like, "We'll get you a can of paint." You know. Sometimes the paint over is a better option. I just yeah. I mean, the paint was already flaking off. So I mean, you know, if, if you get called for a new job and it's all paint and brick. Chances are it's going to be it's going to be cheaper for you to, or cheaper for the customer too to do a painter because you know a lot of the uh, graffiti removers are going to, or, you know it'll damage that um, paint you know trying to get it off there so you're going to be painting the wall anyway. On your advertising, did you say graffiti removal? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. One of your services.
in the gang tags. Yes. And that's how they caught him. Somebody caught on that, what is that? And then the gang units came out, and sure enough, he was giving them clues to how he was killing these people. Well, that's exactly 29 people. What Rowan's talking about is exactly how you market this to law enforcement. Okay, we live in Redneckville, USA. Our town is about this big. The county's out here, and everybody lives out here. So you got old Miss Smith, and her barn gets tagged. Well, she doesn't think about calling the police. She just thinks that some little high school kid had nothing better to do. This is, you know, on her barn, and she'll call a paint company or a pressure washer company and not call the police. Well, if the company that's going in to do the cleaning is actually trained on how to read this stuff or identify whether it is a, a wayward child or a budding artist or a pissed off gang member, if you can read that, then you know how to record, report, and then remove. And it does help law enforcement, so that is one way to market what you're doing with your law enforcement and actually partner up with them like you were saying because you're a new line of defense. They may never have known about it, except that you knew what you were looking at. So, I don't know about you guys, but our law enforcement is shorthanded, and our, we don't have a gang task force anymore, <coughs> because too many chiefs, not enough Indians, and it's a mess. So, you know, that's, that's our sales point with our law enforcement right now, is okay, people are paying a, attention. Greg's trying to get a gang task force, but like, like she said, there's too many chiefs, not enough Indians. And you know, it everybody knows you can't, you can't have a, a task force with all the chiefs. Yeah. And I'm, I, it, it frustrates me because I have a child in middle school, and he sees gang tags, and he can't identify yep. gang tags. He's 12. He knows them better than I do. That disturbs me. So you know, as a parent, you have to look at stuff that your kids are seeing, and it you know, it boils down to when you're taking this stuff down, you're improving the quality of the area that you live in. I mean, obviously, it's clean. You know, no, y'all don't want to see people with dirty windows. You also don't want to see graffiti all over the place. It all comes down to that. But and, there are some, and there are some things that, that you can do to... There are some things that you can do to help prevent uh, graffiti also. Um, there's uh, coatings that you can put on. Some of them are wax that you don't see and you just go in there with 180 degree water melts the wax well the paint's on the wax it comes off and you just reapply it uh, they have permanent barriers it leaves the surface shiny so i mean not too many people won't shine for it i mean there's some people out there to do but you know, very far few between um, and you put you put the permanent barrier on there they spray it on you can take a rag and wipe it off you know, a little bit of some safe cleaner Right on there and wipe right on. So there are some options if you're in a heavy tag area, and you know the people's like, well, you know, what can I do to help with it? Well, then then you just put the barriers, you know, the uh, wax barriers up, go in there, you're there for five minutes, and you just clean the whole thing. All you do is just turn the heat up on the pressure washer, wash it right off, let it dry, reapply. It. more questions? Uh, did, did everybody get a sample?